Hey guys, this is Ben. Welcome back to the channel. San Diego Comic Con just happened this past weekend and we had a ton of announcements from Marvel Studios. We got the confirmation that we are currently in the multiverse saga. We got phases four, five, and six laid out and we got a ton of projects officially announced. So today I'm going to stop and rank all of the projects from phase five and the ones we know from phase six from my least to most anticipated. Let's do it. Coming in in last place is Echo. So this is a spin-off show from Hawkeye. Obviously we saw the character of Echo introduced in the Hawkeye show. I thought she was a good character, though I just don't see her leading her own show and I don't know what direction they're gonna take her in. I would much rather see the continuation of Yelena or even Hawkeye than, than this angle. So I just don't really know what to expect. It has some good showrunners and Daredevil and Kingpin are supposedly going to show up. So that gets me a little bit more excited. But uh, yeah, this one's in last for me. At number 14, we have Agatha Coven of Chaos. Again, I liked Agatha as a side character in WandaVision. I thought she was a great villain. But do we need to see an Agatha show? This is one of those shows that makes me feel the oversaturation of Marvel a little bit. Is this integral to the story? Is this story important to tell? Or is this just a spin-off because of how popular the character was? I'm still gonna watch it day one, but there's not a lot here to get me excited. At number 13, I have Loki season two. I enjoyed the first season of Loki. It's not one of my absolute favorite Disney Plus shows, but there's a lot about that show I really love. Tom Hiddleston is fantastic. So just for those reasons alone, I'm very much anticipating the show. I'm also excited to see where they're going to go after that finale now that the multiverse has been broken open. Is Kang gonna be in the show? What's happening? Is there gonna be a lot of time travel shenanigans? At number 12, I have Ironheart. So this character is going to be introduced in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We just saw her in the teaser trailer. We don't really know a lot about the show yet. We don't know what direction they're going to take her character. So just because of the unknowns with this show, it's a little bit lower down, but it could rise up my list quite a bit once we see her in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Okay, at number 11, I have Daredevil Born Again. Now, I never saw the Daredevil show on Netflix, hoping to watch it very soon, but I'm not really familiar with this character. Literally, I've only ever seen him in Spider-Man No Way Home. I also love the fact that this is an 18 episode season. I hope that this is a trend that continues. We get more longer seasons and less of these six episode seasons. The six episodes just aren't working. They feel like a weird compromise between a two hour movie and a long show. But like I said, this one is not higher up on my list just because of the fact that I'm not super familiar with this character yet. At number 10, I have Blade. Again, I have never seen any of the Blade movies from the early 2000s, but the idea that we're getting a vampire fighting, killing hero, is that what he is, in the MCU, sounds really weird, really unique, something we haven't seen before, so I'm very excited for that. The main thing that's getting me excited, though, is Mahershala Ali playing Blade, Academy Award winning Mahershala Ali. We have a bit of a more unknown director here and writer, so it could really go anywhere. I think this could be fantastic. I think that it could be a bit of a mess when we're starting to get into horror, vampire elements in the MCU. Will they blend into the larger MCU? We will see. At number nine, I have the Marvels. Now this one has actually shot up my list a little bit after seeing Ms. Marvel. I love the character of Kamala Khan and I'm so excited to see her interact with Captain Marvel, with Monica Rambeau. Seeing them together as a team gets me really excited. And I've heard that there's gonna be some wacky elements to this. Nia DaCosta is directing and she has a very strong directorial style. I'm excited to see what she's gonna bring. Once we know some more information or we see a trailer, this one could shoot up my list even more, but as of right now, yeah, very excited to see these three characters on screen together. At number eight, I have Captain America, New World Order. This is one that I think might have been even higher on my list if it wasn't for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I find that to be one of the weaker installments into the MCU. So just for that reason alone, I'm a little bit less excited for this film if they're gonna continue down that path. That being said, this is still a Captain America movie. I'm excited to see Falcon, Anthony Mackie, finally take on the mantle and have his own Captain America film. I'm very excited to see the direction they take with this one. The director of this film is a little hit and miss. 
So that gets me a little bit worried. At number seven, I have Secret Invasion. They've described this show as being a big event, event television. I think they're putting a lot into this show. I think this is gonna be a big story with stakes that really does impact the MCU. And from what we've heard from San Diego Comic-Con, the tone here is a lot more gritty and uh, dark, kind of like a Captain America Winter Soldier. That gets me very excited. So for all those reasons, this one is one of those Disney Plus shows that I'm actually very excited for, though it's six episodes, which like I've said, hasn't been a great format. So I'm hoping that it does end up working with this show. At number six, I have Ant-Man 3 Quantumania. This is the kickoff to phase five. And I think this is gonna have large impacts in the MCU. I think this is gonna be integral to the multiverse saga. We have Kang being introduced for the first time, kind of after Loki, but this is the first time we're gonna see Kang the Conqueror. Paul Rudd returning, the fun humor from the first two films mixed with Jonathan Major's Kang. I'm there. At number five, I have the Thunderbolts. So this is kind of like Marvel's Suicide Squad. It's a team of anti-heroes that are coming together. And I expect this to be like a big Avengers style film, but with a more villainous team. And I think that sounds great. I think that's a fun little twist on the Avengers and have a fun team up movie, but not with the team you would expect. I think there's a lot you could do with that. A lot of potential, a lot of fun you could have. Again, the director here hasn't really done anything of note. So that's a bit of a red flag maybe, but uh, the writer here is a long time MCU writer. So I, uh, I put my trust in this movie and, and Kevin Feige. At number four, I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I love the Guardians franchise. I love what James Gunn has been doing with these characters, with this world, the corner of the MCU he's been developing. These movies are just so much fun and have so much heart to them while exploring the space and cosmo side of the Marvel Universe in such exciting ways. So I'm excited to see how they cap off this trilogy and this franchise. It has been said that this is the end of the Guardians as we know them. So this is sure to be a very high stakes, emotional, hilarious adventure, and I cannot wait. Okay, now we get into the phase six films. All the phase six films are at the top of my list. Number three, we have Fantastic Four. Come on, it's the Fantastic Four coming into the MCU. This is going to be huge. I'm so excited to see how they're going to incorporate them into the larger MCU, what their origin story is going to be. Once we know the director of this film, the writer, who is starring in this movie, is it going to be John Krasinski? I'd love to see it. Those are questions that we are likely to find out at D23. But until then, just the fact that this movie is coming, I'm sure it's going to have big impacts on the later Avengers films. I can't wait. And then at number one and two, I'll group them together, are Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, and Avengers, Secret Wars. This announcement was crazy. I can't believe that we're having a one-two Avengers punch in 2025, both in the same year. Two Avengers movies in one year. That's insane. The fact that they're coming in three years from now is crazy. They have a lot of work to do establishing these characters, the storylines, letting us get to know these characters so we really care about them going into this film. I believe they can do it, but they don't have a ton of time. This is coming up quick and I think it's gonna be huge. A big multiversal team up Avengers movie unlike anything we've seen before. It's sure to be absolutely massive. We just found out that Dan Daniel Dustin Cretton is directing Kang the uh, Avengers Kang Dynasty, and that's awesome. That's a perfect choice. He did such a phenomenal job with Shang-Chi. He understands emotion. He can direct incredible action. I think he's a great choice to direct this film, and they're getting a, yet another director to do Secret Wars. I think this is gonna be an insane crossover film, especially with all the new characters we've been introduced to just in the past year with phase four. This is gonna be an insane, insane adventure, and I can't wait to see it. All right, so that's it. That's all 15 upcoming Marvel projects ranked based on my anticipation. So let me know what you guys are most excited for down in the comment section below. Rank all of these projects from number one to number 15 down below. What do you think of my list? Also, one more thing I wanna mention is that 
I have been making a lot of videos over on I Crave Network as of late. It's an incredible channel that I've been able to be a part of where I get to do movie reviews, talk about the box office and other fun things. So make sure you go and check that channel out for lots of more content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. See ya.